Well, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all you lovely folks joining me here nice and early over here for the very first episode of Magic the Quizzening. Welcome in. We are an MTG-themed game show here live on Twitch.tv where you, the Magic community, are going to have an effect on how this all manages to play out. Uh, hi there, my name is Howling Minds, and I'm joined here today by three of your linchpins of the Magic community who are ready to battle it out for a chance to win a small charitable donation to a cause of their choice. Uh, first up, hailing from sunny England, uh, <laughs> we have uh, one of the... Hi, it's sunny, sunny England. We have one of the co-hosts of our fan favourite, the BM cast. They are famed for their budget magic articles on sites such as TCG Player, on Polygon, and of course, MTG Rocks. Please join me, everyone, in welcoming Emma Partlow to the show. Emma, how are you today? Hello. Yeah, I'm doing good. A little tired, to be honest, but it's fine. I've got caffeine, so that will uh, tie me over. But yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Nothing that a bit of caffeine won't fix. Very much in the same position. We're, we're perfectly fine. Uh, Emma, what charity are you deciding to uh, to play on behalf of today? Uh, so I'm playing on behalf of Trans Lifeline. It's a charity that's quite important to me, and it's very important just to get that message out there and support people of transgender. So that's who I'll be repping today. Fantastic cause, and I wish you the very best of luck. Uh, secondly, from all the way over in the States, we're joined by one of the figureheads of the cosplay community and an F2K partnered streamer, a uh, force of the Twitch community to be sure. Please join me in welcoming Zabricus to the show. Zabs, how are things? I'm doing lovely. Thank you for asking. You are very welcome. I'm glad things are going well. Zabs, what's your charity of choice today? Who are you playing on behalf of? Uh, I'm up playing on behalf of Operation Underground Railroad. They are a charity that focuses on going in and rescuing uh, children that have been trafficked and then rehabilitating them, putting them into much better places for their lives. Fantastic cause. And I wish you the very best of luck as well. And last, but certainly not least, uh, we have the pleasure of being joined by our reigning and defending Magic the Gathering world champion. They are a two-time Pro Tour winner and a Hall of Famer. Known for making cards in your hand cost two more mana to cast. Please join me in welcoming Paolo Vitor, Dama de Rosa. PV, welcome to the show. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, good. Happy to be here. Thanks for the invite. You're extremely welcome. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, who is your charity of choice today, PV? Uh, so it's Daisy Fauci. It's a local animal shelter. Uh, she does really great work. You know, she goes around rescuing the animals. Uh, and if they need, uh, you know, house stuff like operations, she acquires money for that. Uh, and that's where we got our dog from, uh, Emma. So I have a, we have a really good relationship with them. They, they mean a lot to us. We want to support them as much as we can. Brilliant. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. So, uh, folks, just so you're aware that uh, now that you've heard these three fantastic causes that our winners are playing for today, uh, we'll, of course, be making a small charitable donation from the show on behalf of us to the winner. But any and all donations we receive today will indeed be sent on to, uh, to that cause as well. So please do keep that in mind if you're deciding to support the show. You can do that in the tabs below the channel if you'd like to send any donations. And everything past fees will make its way to the winner's cause as well. So please do keep that in mind. With the players introduced, uh, let me walk you through tonight's show. Let me explain how things are going to work. All three players are going to compete in three rounds that are designed to test their general knowledge and their guesswork skills alongside knowledge of... Uh, knowledge and predictability, I should say, of the Magic community in general. At the end of every round, we're going to take a look at the scores to see how everyone is doing. Uh, and more importantly, for the sake of the show, at the time of broadcast, all facts and research is correct to the best of our knowledge. But in the event that there is an error or a mistake, uh, the answer provided by the Howling Minds team will be final for the purposes of today's show. So please do keep that in mind. Players, are you ready to make a start on round number one? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's give it a spin. Yeah. Let's hop on over. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Well, welcome on in to round number one. We're going to call this one the Ponder round because it's time for our contestants to consider some general knowledge surrounding the game. Uh, each player, in turn, is going to receive a prompt uh, of which they will get three each. Uh, and they'll be given three answers to go alongside that prompt. Their goal is to sort them into the order that we're asking for in the question. If the player places all three of them correctly, they'll score themselves 100 points. And if they place one of them correctly, they will score themselves 50 points instead. Uh, before the show today, we randomly selected Emma to be going first in this particular case. Zabs will be going second. And PV will be going third. For every other round moving forward, uh, we're going to start with the player with the lowest current score. Uh, players, it's important to remember that unless otherwise stated in the question, we're going to be looking to sort these prompts from lowest to highest. 
Uh, I will okay. remind you of this in the question whenever I can, um, but please do keep that in mind. It will be on the screen hopefully for you as well, which I'll make sure you can see in just a sec. Um, right. As cool. we can now do that without spoiling any answers, which is super, super important. Okay, Emma, are you ready for uh, for prompt number one? Just loading. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, we all good? Uh, yes, I'm good. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the first prompt for this round. Uh, Emma, in what order were these sets printed? Your answers for this round, they are New Phyrexia, Zendikar Rising, and Core 2021. Emma, what so are, are we going? Are we going from earliest to latest? Yes, in this particular case, okay. looking from earliest to latest. So I am going. So New Phyrex is earliest. Then, oh god, I have too many magic sets. Um, <laughs> we're New Phyrexia, Corset, and then Zendikar. I so we're going wrong, for New Phyrexia, yeah. then yeah. Corset, and then Zendikar Rising. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at if you were correct. Oh, I'm afraid not. Wow, New Phyrexia was indeed the earliest set. You're not wrong about that one. That was May 13th of 2011. Uh, Core 21 was in July, summer of 2020. Uh, and Zendikar yeah. Rising, September 25th of 2020. So yeah. ever so slightly later. So one, one correct answer there for Emma. So 50 points for you, uh, but not the full 100, I'm afraid. Zavricus, you ready for your first question? <clears throat> I mean, I guess. You guess. All right. Let's take a let's take a look <laughs> at what the uh, at what the quiz gods would like you to answer. Uh, nice and simple. Okay, number two. Place these cards in order from lowest to highest mana value. So we're simply looking for lowest to highest mana cost in this particular case. And your answers are: Lightning Bolt, Lightning Strike, and Arc Lightning. Three very, uh, very lightning-themed um, cards. Yes. Um, and it's uh, lowest mana cost <laughs> lowest to highest. To highest. Mana that cost. is correct, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know how much arc lightning costs. Um, <laughs> uh, lightning bolt. And then... Uh, we'll go with lightning strike, then arc lightning. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Strike, Arc Lightning. Let's take a look. You are correct, Zamps. Well done. Lightning Bolt, of course, costing one mana. One of the most iconic spells <laughs> in Magic history. Uh, lightning Strike, just costing two mana for a red instant. And Arc Lightning, three mana spell from some time ago. Perfect stuff. Okay, PV, are you ready? Let's go. Let's take a look at PV's first question for today. It is prompt number three. Oh, I apparently clicked the wrong button. Um... <laughs> Please order these cards for me based on their alternative casting costs. So again, looking for the lowest to highest in this case. We're not looking for the CMC. We're looking for the alternative way of casting these spells. Your three spells are Mizzix Mastery, Verdant Mastery, and Temporal Mastery. So many Masteries. So Temporal Mastery is the cheapest, then Verdant Mastery, and then Mizzix Mastery. Indeed, absolutely. Nice and quick there with PV. Temporal Mastery, of course, the miracle uh, base time walk, costing just two mana to cast if you miracle it. Verdant Mastery, the four mana ramp spell that uh, costs you a little more, uh, sorry, a little less, if you don't mind the uh, opponent having the upside as well. And Mizzix Mastery overloading uh, all the spells in your graveyard for a total of eight mana, making it the most expensive. So the full 100 points there off to PV. Good start, good start. Second question coming at you, Emma. <coughs> Very best of luck. Let's take a look. Uh, order these players for me from the least Two to the second. most. No problem. Order these oh, players from Jesus me for Christ. the least to the most. We're looking for Pro Tour <laughs> wins. Now, to clarify for you for this question, we're not considering Mythic Invitationals or Mythic Championships. We are only considering events that were labelled Pro Tours. Got it. Okay? The so correct term. Understood. Ooh, bold, bold statement being made live on Twitch. But yes, only, oh, only events uh, being labelled as Pro Tours for this oh. question. So please do keep that in mind. Right. Your three answers for this question. We have LSV, Louis Scott Vargas. We have, oh, would you look at that? PVDDR. Possibly <laughs> one of the answers on this one. And Andrea Mengucci as your third prompt for this question. Okay. Who do you think's so got the least, most PT least wins? The highest, yeah. Indeed, least Can to most. Can I ask most. you a question? Of course. 
<laughs> I'm not going to help. Well, you, you could help, but it could be the wrong answer. Like, yeah, isn't, isn't there one of friend options? <laughs> it's not like I posted oh, how many PT wins that there. PV yeah. had all over Twitter or anything. My uh, okay, so um, so Lisa Hives, we'll go Menguchi. Okay. Um, then we'll go PV, then NSV. But this is a stab in the dark. Ooh. I hope he's not too offended. To be honest. We'll take a look. Unfortunately for Mr. Mangucci, currently <laughs> at zero PT wins, did never manage to yeah. pick it up, unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> of course, Mythic Invitational winner, but uh, but no PTs. LSV, one Pro Tour win, that is PT Berlin in 2008, and of course PV, who I'm not at all biased towards, uh, PT San Juan <laughs> in 2010, and PT Kyoto in 2017, meaning they came out yeah. with two Pro Tour wins, which is lovely to see. So, unfortunately, only the 50 points there for Emma. I'll take it considering I just stabbed that in the <laughs> Zabs, are you ready for your second question? Uh, yes. She, she says sheepishly. Let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> okay. Can you order these planeswalkers for me from the <laughs> okay. uh, lowest to highest in terms of starting loyalty? So we're looking for the loyalty printed on the card, not the loyalty that it often has after its Wait, first so loyalty, activation. Loyalty, not CMC. Correct. Starting loyalty of these planeswalkers. Okay. Let's take a look at your three planeswalkers. They are the Royal Scions, Teferi, Master of Time, and Jace, Mirror Mage. Oh, I forgot Jace, Mirror Mage was a card. <laughs> <laughs> so did I until I was looking for a planeswalker uh... with the correct amount of loyalty. <laughs> I know how much all of those cost. I do not remember their starting loyalties whatsoever. Ah, so you're telling me I wrote a good um, quiz. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I want to say that uh, Teferi Master of Time, the starting loyalty is four. Jace Mirror Mage, pff, I, I don't even think I've ever played that card. <laughs> Royal Scions, I want to say they start at five? Or is it three? I know they cost three. <laughs> and you ult it at eight. <laughs> we, we, we have some uh, correct okay. pieces of information here, but unfortunately, <laughs> no, none of the ones that we're looking for. Uh, let's do Jace to Fairy Royal Scions. We're going with Jace as the lowest and Royal Scions as the highest. Let's take a look. Almost, unfortunately, not I probably have quite. Uh, to Fairy Master of Time, of course, <laughs> able to activate in both players' turns, meaning its starting loyalty is only three. Uh, Jace Mirror Mage, starting loyalty of four, which places it in the middle, and the Royal Scions coming into play on a starting loyalty of five, making it have the highest number. So, fifty points there for Zabs, but not the full hundred, I'm afraid. PV, oh. are, you, are you ready for your second question? I'll take it. <clears throat> let's uh, let's take a look at the next one for PV. Let's. Uh, well, that was a bit of a spoiler. Sorry about that. It all loaded in in one go, which is perfect and exactly how I intended it to go. And I will not be taking any questions at this time. Uh, <laughs> order these cards for me based on the number Ooh. of paper printings they have. So, to clarify for this question, we're not counting foils and non-foils as different printings. We're only looking for the number of sets in which these cards have been printed. And we're not counting digital-only copies. They need to be paper printings only. Your choices here are Evolving Wilds, Cultivate, and Rampant Growth. Uh, this is very hard. It, mm. it is. Uh, <laughs> it's your question. They, Come on, they, they, can't, they can't be easy forever, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, honestly, I have no idea. Uh, Get in. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go with this is a total guess. I'm gonna go cultivate is the lowest, then evolving wilds, and then rampant growth. Okay, so cultivate, evolving wilds, rampant growth. Let's take a look. Uh, unfortunately, not in this case. So the totals for this were taken from the lovely MTG Goldfish search engine. Uh, okay. Rampant growth has twenty total paper printings in the history of Magic. Cultivate has twenty-two. And Evolving Wilds has 36, meaning it what? is a few... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was put in every Commander product wow. and set and, wow. <laughs> and everything known to man oh. for uh, the longest of times, meaning it was printed into Oblivion, meaning Evolving Wilds, with 36 individual paper printings, uh, which is kind of astounding, really, when you think about it. So... Uh, 50, okay, points yeah. for, 50 points there for 50 points there for PV. Not quite, but uh, but well done, well done, well done. Pull one 
for terramorphic expanse. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, you know, that, every, that's every, what I thought it wasn't so much. Yes. Uh, mm. So you're telling me the question worked. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> let's take a look. Let's take a look at, uh, at question number seven and the third and final one for just Emma. Let's take a look. Uh, I need you to sort these lands for me uh, based on the number yep. of colors they produce from the, again, lowest to highest. Okay. So let's take a look at these lands. We have uh -huh. Tendo Ice Bridge, Scalding Tarn, oh, and Katria Triome. So colors they produce. Correct. So just what they produce on their own. So lowest to highest. So we'll go Scalding Tarn, Triome, and then Ice Bridge. Scalding Tarn, Triome, and Icebridge. Emma, Emma, not falling victim to my very obvious bait. Uh, Scalding Tarn, fetch land, produces no colours of mana by itself. It does have to fetch another land to do that, so it is at the very bottom. Katria Triome, tapping for three colours of mana. And Tendo Icebridge, if you remove a charge counter from it, will tap for all five colours, meaning that it is, in fact, the highest number of colours produced by any land on the page. So full marks there for Emma. Very, very well done. Zabs, let's take a look at your third and final dedicated question coming out for you now. Number eight, uh, sort these cards by the total power and toughness of the tokens they create. So again, we're looking for the lowest, the highest in this case. Total power and toughness of the tokens made by these cards. Your answers are Heart's Desire, Roar of the Worm, and Harmonious Archon. Yes. Um, I think the only card I even know there is Harmonious Archon, and I don't even remember what tokens it creates. I, I want to say those are three threes, but it might be two twos that become three threes. I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> Okay, you know, uh, completely guessing. Uh, let's go with uh, Roar of the Worm, Harmonious Archon Heart's Desire. So we're going with Roar of the Worm making the least power and toughness, <laughs> Harmonious Archon in the middle, and Heart's Desire making the most power and toughness. Let's take a look. Uh, afraid not, Zabs, in this particular case. So Heart's Desire, like the lowest one money. in this particular case. It makes a 1-1 one, one token. It's the token <laughs> half of Lovestruck Beast. So it does only make a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Harmonious Archon. Uh, the oh, little, that's... The... I didn't even that. <laughs> <laughs> the little trick there. Archon making 1-1 one, one tokens in the middle, but of course bumping them with its effect to make them into 3-3s. Three so they are only 1-1s one, to start with. And Roar of the Worm. Big 6-6 six, six worm token being made by uh, the lovely flashback spell there, making it the largest number of power and toughness. Okay, PV, last dedicated question for you coming your way for you right about now, and it is... Uh, sort this block into the order in which it released for me. So we're looking from first to last in this particular case. Uh, and the, the order these sets were released in in this block. Your answers are Journey into Nyx, Born of the Gods, and Theros. Hmm. I'm supposed to know this one. But... <laughs> you, you said it, not me. <laughs> Not to put any pressure on you or anything, PV, but the chat is saying easy pretty repeatedly, actually. <laughs> so, uh... But you're saying they're a block. They are a block, yes. They were the three sets released in the block of original Theros. So I would say Theros is first. I may have given that away. No, I knew that one. <laughs> I, I was deciding between the other two. I think then it's Born of the Gods and then Journey. Let's take a look at if you're correct. Uh, you are, indeed. Theros, the first set of that block released. Uh, Born of the Gods in the middle there. Th you're saving face. No need to, to be publicly embarrassed. Uh, Journey into Nyx uh, being the third and final set of that block. Okay then, folks. So we have one final question in this round. However, it is ever so slightly different than the ones before it. Uh, I'm going to be asking for an answer from all three players in this particular case. We'll go in the order that we were before. So I'll get Emma to answer first, Zabrika to answer second, and PV to answer third. It is, however, the same mm -hmm. question. 
and it is not an easy one, I imagine there'll be a fair amount of guesswork. However, if, uh, if you can get all the answers in the right place on this question, you'll score yourself 200 points instead of the normal 100. However, there will be no points for getting one answer correct. I'm looking for perfect answers only. Let's take a look at the final question for this round. Please sort these cards for me based on the number of words in their text box. So to elaborate for this question, I am looking for English printings only in this case. Uh, for the sake of uh -huh. clarity, and we are not counting flavor text. Flavor text is not something that we're interested in for these cards. We're just looking for the number of words that appear in their text box otherwise. Your three answers for this question. Questing Beast. I knew Questing Beast was going to be one. I knew it. Possibility knew Storm. <laughs> and Jeez. Elder Gargaroth. Well, there's no Eld there's no um, Strixhaven card, so that's fine. No, I thought I would be nice <laughs> to you. Worry about Strixhaven card, I, I, so that's good. I, I thought that was probably some kind of human torture. Just, so. just, just like yeah, just have all the deans and just figure out which one has the most text. That would be horrible. Um, I need to think on this because this is difficult. That's fine. Well, I have a question, but yep. I'm going to get to see their answer before I answer. Uh, no, I'm not going to reveal the correct answer. I'm just going to ask for all the players to give me an answer before we reveal. Um, that's a good point. Someone just said in the chat not to assist, but does reminder text count? Uh, no, reminder text does not count either. We're just looking for, okay, cool. for keywords and right. relevant abilities. Okay. Um, so, so I'll take an answer from all three players prior to revealing the correct answer. Sure. Um, so I am going to go... Do I... Hmm. So it's a trick because Question Beast is going to throw me off because it's just like endless text. Um, so we will go with Gargaroth. Questing Beast, then Possibility Storm. So Gargroth with the least, Questing Beast in the middle, yeah. Possibility Storm up top. Zabs, what are and you I'll thinking? I'll probably get burned for it. Can't believe Questing Beast. I've never of... seen the card Possibility Storm, so that makes this a lot more difficult. Understandable. Uh, um, <laughs> Questing Beast is nothing but a wall of text, uh, um, but Elder Gargroth is as well. Uh, 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 least highest. Um, uh, let's let's go with uh, possibility storm Gargaroth beast. So we're going with possibility storm as the lowest, Elder Gargaroth in the middle, and questing beast as the most amount of words. PV, what are you thinking? Uh, I think Gargaroth is last in Questing Beast, and that's about the extent of my knowledge, <laughs> but I'm not even sure about that. Uh, I would probably go Gargaroth, then Questing Beast, then Possibility Storm. So we're going with Gargaroth, lowest, Questing Beast in the middle, and Possibility Storm up top. Let's take a look at who's managed to do well with this one. There we go, both Emma and PV scoring full marks on this one. Elder Gargaroth with the least number of words in Me his text box. Me it, actually pays off. Look at that, I'm proud, <laughs> I'm very proud of you. Um, Gargaroth with 29 <laughs> words in the text box. Questing Beast was indeed the, the, uh, the, the trick, if you like. As everyone knows, it's a wall of text. It is 48 words in the text box for Questing Beast. And Possibility Storm, the commander staple, an absolute whopping 64 words in the text box of Possibility Storm. Oh. Uh, is quite quite a lot of words in that one, one way or the other. So, full marks there going to both Emma and PV. Uh, let's pop on over to the scoreboard at the end of round one. I'm hoping this has functioned the way that it should, and we'll take a look and see how all these players are doing. We might still be waiting on a last score update there, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm lucky to have assistance working the scoreboard for me. So, according to the screen at this moment in time, Zabricus, 200 points. Not a terrible start for the day. Uh, slow, slow work in progress. We're getting there. Can still definitely catch up. Emma in second place with 400 points and with a very small 50-point lead at this moment in time. <clears throat> PV out in first place at the second. So looking forward to uh, to seeing how this one goes. Everyone's still very much in range at the end of round one. Uh, let's take a start on round number two. Okay then, players. Welcome along 
into round number two. We're calling this one uh, Future Sight. Uh, name, name subject to change. We'll see how I feel about it in, uh, in the coming months. Uh, the round is really simple. We're going to try and spend some time enjoying the highlights of Magic History. Uh, some recent stream highlights from some press professional streamers. Just enjoyable moments. Some of the best of what Magic has to offer. However, I'm going to stop at the good part. I'm going to freeze, freeze the clip right on the spot um, and, and ask you what happens next prior to revealing what, what is coming as the best part of the clip. Uh, we've got five questions here and very much like the last question of the round, we're going to be asking for all three players to submit an answer prior to showing you the clip and revealing what actually happens at the end. As promised, we'll start with the current lowest scoring player, so we'll be asking for Zabricus to give an answer first in this round. It will then be PV in second and Emma in third, uh, as we're going to continue down the order that we were in otherwise. Does that make sense? Okay, brilliant. Um, so clip number one here is actually uh, from quite some time ago. It is uh, a lovely streamer called Floofies, who is deciding that, hey, I'll be the bad guy on the ladder. And I'll play the Tybalt's trickery deck that everyone loves to hate, uh, trying to ramp out some Ugins <laughs> and Ultimatums on turn number two. Uh, they found themselves in a rather awkward position where they're actually going to be using their Tybalt's trickery as a counter spell on their opponent's spell. Uh, so players, if you are loading up the YouTube versions, please feel free to load up question number one. Ooh. Otherwise, I am going to put uh, the YouTube version of question number one up on screen for you, and we'll take a look at this clip and see what your options are. I'm gonna decline to let you do that. I'm using Tybalt to counter actual spells. This is genius. So players, you'll see, uh, well, Chaz, I guess you'll see there. Uh, Tybalt, uh, Cosmic Imposter, being countered by a Tybalt's trickery. Players, what do you think is gonna happen in the next couple of seconds? Is the opponent going to cast a copy of Pact of Negation on the Tybalt's trickery, and then be unable to pay for it during the following upkeep and lose the game immediately? Will the Tybalt's trickery resolve and cascade into another Tybalt? Or will Arena attempt to resolve Tybalt's trickery, but instead crash horribly and lead us with uh, with no end of the game? That is A, B, and C in order. The prompt should be available for you uh, in your video and on screen now. Uh, you have some time to think about this. Uh, Zabs, what are you thinking? What do you think happens next? I may have to flick that back on again as the video is only so long. Um, I mean, as much as I want to say C, I think I'm gonna okay. go with B. You're gonna go, you're gonna go with gonna go with B. You reckon the uh, the trickery resolves and cascades into another Tybalt? Okay, PV, what do you think? Oh, sorry, I'm confused. This is the one where we're uh, we're all entering. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, I thought it was in it. Sorry. No. I'm okay. Confused. You're you're, you're uh... all, all playing each of the videos there because I was not edit. I was... I was not editing fifteen of these. <laughs> what I was thinking was that I was glad this is not a question for me. Uh, I see. <laughs> so, do you, I'm going to you... go with... Sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to know, make sure you, uh, you saw the clip and you were okay. Or did, did you want it again? No, no, I'm good. I just don't know the answer. I'm going to go with B. Going to go with B as well? Reckon we're going to cascade into another, another tip ball. Emma? I think? think B as well. You think B as well. You reckon as we're much gonna, as I want to say C. Gonna cascade C. into another Tybalt. Well, let's take a look yeah. at uh, at the full version on stream now. Let's take a look at what happens. I'm gonna decline Tybalt's to trickery, <laughs> countering this Tybalt. Tybalt's Floopy, Floopy's super spells. happy about it. Very, this very overjoyed. Genius. Uh, and if we take a quick second, look at that. I have it resolves, Tybalt. it counters Tybalt's the trickery. Tybalt, and oh dear. Oh no! Oh dear, there may be another Tybalt on the horizon instead. So not very much achieved, unfortunately, by this particular Tybalt's <laughs> trickery. All three players guessing correctly. Uh, be there the correct option with another Tybalt coming into play as a result of that trickery. So points going to all three of you there. Let's move on to the second video for this round. This time, we are a slightly older clip this time around. It comes from an SCG event back in 2015, so quite some time ago, in fact. We have the lovely Brad Nelson, who you'll notice looks significantly younger in this clip, as most of my chat did yesterday, versus the immortal Reed Duke. They are playing <laughs> two standard decks from the day. We have Junk Reanimator and Jund Midrange, featuring uh, some of our favorites. You'll see, of course, that, uh, that Brad uh, 
flickering out an Obsidat to put his opponent to one life. Uh, and Reed needs to make a comeback. So let's take a look at this clip and see how this goes. Brad basically is going to bring the Obsidat back in, drain Reed to one. The only removal spell. Obsidat going out of play. Tragic slip. Reed it's needs some luck. Going to tap the top of the deck. What do we think happens, folks? Does Reed knock the top card of his deck over when knocking the deck for good luck? Uh, he reveals a card that would win the game, and so they have to call a judge as a result. Uh, B, does the power go out in the convention hall, which abruptly ends the broadcast at the most awkward time? Or C, Reed top decks a way to deal 11 damage this turn, winning the race against the Obsidat while being on one life. Zabs, what do you think? I'm first again. Yeah, we're going to keep, stay for this round with the lowest scoring player at the end of round one, so we'll keep going I'm, in this I'm order. I'm just first forever, okay. Um, well, that, that, oh that's not what I meant. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, just because I believe in the power of Jund, I'm going to go with C. You're going with C, Reed top decking 11 damage. PB, what do you think? Uh, so can I see the board again? Uh, absolutely, I can pop it back up as the YouTube video. Uh, alternatively, of course, feel free to, to grab a copy in the Discord for you. But uh, we'll have the board on screen for as long as I can. Because it's it's a little bit small for me. Uh, I see. Uh, if you want to uh, to open up the YouTube video and pause it, that's probably the best way to do it. Because uh, sadly, OBS is not good software. <laughs> So I'm going to go with um, B. Going to go with B? Yes. The power cutting out and ending the broadcast abruptly. I like it. Emma, what are you thinking? This is a tough one because this is way before my time. Um, good, good. So, so as usual in this probably this round, I'm just going to stab in the dark and I'm going to go with B as well. Going with B as well. The power going out in the convention hall Stabbing and abruptly the ending the, the broadcast. The light going out kind of goes well, so. Yeah, it does seem like it would be appropriate for it to go out the, the most opportune moment, right? Let's take a look at how this match actually played out. Brad, of course, uh, going to be flipping this Obstinat out of play, getting ready to win the game next turn. Reed will knock the top of his deck and draw a Kessig Wolf run oh! like a champion, which is going to let him pour all his mana into a very, very large Thragtusk uh, to attack and win this game. Meaning, of course, R to C for this one, Zabricus scoring the points, uh, and unfortunately no power cuts as much as we all wanted to see it. Uh, if anyone does find a clip of the power going on, then please feel free to submit it. I, I, I may or may not have to include it in the future. Uh, let's take a look at question number three for this round. This time round, we've got a very recent stream highlight from the lovely LSV. Uh, I was recently practicing for the Arena Open, so I was playing some Strixhaven Limited uh, and showcasing the best of what the pros are capable of doing. Unfortunately, he does appear to be flooding out just a little bit in the current game. Uh, let's take a look and see how things are to start with. So LSV here, not particularly happy about drawing oh, yet yeah. another land right. for turn. Opponent also seems to not have an awful lot going on. Do we think that Luis will draw a blot out the sky? His opponent will realize it's being cast and concede before he finishes calculating the X cost. Will Luis go to take a bite out of his burrito and drop it all over his lap? Or will Luis draw Agonizing Remorse and cast it for information, failing to notice he's on one life point? Zabs, what do you think? <sighs> yes. Um, Good no. I, I feel like all of these are very likely things that could happen, and I would want to see each and every single one of these happen. Um, I Just because this is definitely what I would do, I, I'm uh, going to go with C. We're going with C, drawing agonizing remorse. Perfect. PV, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's it's all pretty likely to. <laughs> like maybe even two of those at the same time. Uh, but, but probably C as well. We're going with C as well. Emma, what do you think? I'm going C because I f vaguely remember seeing something on Twitter about this. And I think it was Sam Black going, oh yeah, agonizing remorse loses life or something or something to that extent. So let's, uh, let's um, take a look. I'm going to go with C as well. Let's take a look and see if you're all correct. Uh, Luis uh, 
pretty happy with most of his life decisions oh, yeah. up until this point. Right. Uh, <laughs> opponent continues to play another land. Nothing really happens. Oh, would you look at that? Agonizing sure remorse. What a here, fantastic draw in this particular spot. <laughs> opponent on all lands. I guess we'll just exile a card from the graveyard. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear, the game appears to have ended. <laughs> nice. Uh, Luis, of course, on one life there, unable to resolve Agonizing Remorse, meaning all three players right, indeed right. scoring themselves the 100 points. We took the honourable way out. Uh, for <laughs> that particular answer. We're going to move on to number four of five for these video clips. This is another really old one, so folks that are new to Magic, enjoy the quality of, of old world championship footage. I trust you, it's uh, some, some exemplary high quality stuff. Uh, we've got two two familiar faces in this spot. They are uh, Hall of Famer Gabriel Nassif and also Hall of Famer Patrick Chapin uh, playing a match at Worlds in 2003. Uh, they are both playing the Ignite Memories Storm deck, so trying to storm off and kill each other to the best of their ability. Uh, for those unfamiliar with Ignite Memories, it is a card that has Storm and asks you, your opponent to reveal their hand, uh, and then they take damage equal to the CMC of the card revealed for every copy. Um, so we have Nassif here having mulliganed to four, and we have Chapin about to resolve five copies of Ignite Memories. Let's take a look. Eight mana. Tar fire you. You got 13. Storm count is at three. Grape, Grape shot. shot you for four. So Grape Shot going upstairs for four, Grape followed by five. Ignite five Memories two. for five. Ignite memories for five. The camera work hanging on that graveyard for uh, for, so, for some time, as you can as you can see. Uh, the lovely Chapin, happy with how things are going against his opponent on Mulligan to four, simply asks, "Do you have any responses to ignite memories?" So, what do you think happens next? Does Gabriel Nassif skillfully survive all five copies of ignite memories, forcing the crowd to go wild? Uh, does Gabriel Nassif respond to Chapin's question with a swear word as an answer, causing both players <laughs> to laugh? Or C, does Nassif survive four copies of Ignite Memories and the crowd celebrates far too early before Nassif then dies to the fifth and final copy? So In my first you, you are indeed, yes. <laughs> for, 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 for this round, for this round. Uh, uh... Uh, I, don't, I, I don't even know what those cards are. We have some I have no very idea old how much footage. damage would be done. Uh, uh, we're just going to go with A, just because I, I want that to be what happens. We're going with A. I mean, so... I kind of want to see what happens to you, but... Yeah, of course. So okay. surviving, surviving all five copies seems like a fair guess to me. PV, what do you think? I think it's it's probably A as well. I remember something very unlikely happened, but I don't remember for sure if it's we'll, you know, all of it or just a little bit, but indeed. I'm going to go with A. We'll go with A as well, Emma. I vaguely remember hearing something about this or reading about it like ever so briefly, and my gut's telling me C, so I'm going to go with C. Going with like, C in this Just going on an inkling. But, with, uh, yeah, with I remember, I remember something for... ridiculous happening with it. Alrighty, so this uh, one is quite a long clip. Uh, we'll bring it up on screen, and I will do my best to walk you through it as we go. Uh, Nassif's answer to Chapin's question yeah, of any responses, a simple no. Uh, as, as he places his hand on the table for the first copy to resolve, you'll see that we're, uh, we're randomly determining which card is getting flipped over per copy here by rolling a dice. So to start with, grape Nassif, shot. not too upset, grape reveals seven, a Grape Shot, seven. takes two damage. Decent start, maybe maybe we have a chance here. If Pat ever hits the Ignite Memories, I believe this game is over. Yeah. One, and two, three, only four, four, five, six. One more Grape Shot, I think two more. Three. You see Nassif getting a little more shy and uh, perhaps grape peeking oh, at the card <laughs> before uh, before <laughs> turning it over. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Taking two yeah, more damage, is, going down to five shot. life points. Again, taking a cheeky peek here. Doesn't want to reveal to the camera uh, too much before we know what's going on. Three more. The card oh, this hits. Is the third. This is the, third. Two more. the grape shot grape again, shot. meaning two more damage, right. putting the Seath down to three life here with two more copies to go. Nine, one in nine shots. You know this dissolved because the Seath doesn't have his yellow hat. Indeed. It's true. 2003. Flips the right of flame to the fourth copy, which costs one mana, meaning the seed is on two life. 
gonna try more times. <laughs> Both players <laughs> thoroughly enjoying themselves in this particular spot. One, two, three, four, five, six. He hits the right of flame. And you gotta flip it though. And Chapin making sure that you gotta flip it though. You have to flip this. There's no no peeking this time around. In the middle, we flip it. And it's right of flame. Meaning that Nasif will survive five copies of Ignite Memories on exactly one point of life remaining, which means indeed Zabricus and PV scoring the points there. Unfortunately, no points for Emma, who uh, who gave the crowd far too much credit, which is understandable, <laughs> some would say. How dare I? How dare you indeed. Uh, we've got one final question for round number two. It is question number five. And this one, this one's a clip that I imagine some of the regulars in the chat are going to have seen, uh, because it's a clip of me. It's a stream highlight from a stream not so long ago that was a popular, <laughs> popular request for this round. Um, I was in the Insight Esports Open event uh, maybe two weeks ago now, and lucky enough to make the top eight playing Gruul Agro in Historic. Uh, felt like I was in very good shape in game three against Green White Company after spending my turn to casting three copies of Burning Tree Emissary. Shall we take a look at how this game played out? There we go, double pelt collector, triple burning tree. Certainly a pretty damn good start for a grill deck. What do you think happens to me, folks? Do you think that my opponent concedes in anger and I fall out of my chair because I'm laughing too hard about the situation? Do you think that my opponent plays a, uh, a green source, so three green sources in total, and casts three more Lanawar Elves to assert their dominance of having quads over my trips? Or do you think that my opponent casts their one-off copy of Declaration in Stone, making my entire soul leave my body? Zabricus, what do you think? <laughs> uh, um, I think it's either B or C. Uh, um, <laughs> let's see. I, uh, I think I'm going to go with B. Going with B. We're going with green <laughs> yeah, source into... Yeah, got to dominance with the Lanawar Elves. Indeed. Quad, quad Lanawar Elves is quite the start. PV, what do you think? I don't know, but I'm going to guess C. <laughs> You're going to go with C? You're going to go with the Declaration in Stone on all those burning trees? And the deck in stone. Indeed. Emma, what do you think? As much as I want it to be A... I also I want it to be A. I think it is. <laughs> So that, tell, that tells me that it's, that it's not A then. You weren't okay. picking it anyway, um, you're fine. <laughs> Cheating. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go C. Going with C as well. Burning Tree Emissary yeah. uh, about to disappear according to two out of three players. Let's take a look. Very confident, very comfortable. Maybe you did fall out of your chair and you're being very, and you are just, you know. Yeah, double bluff. Nope, there goes my entire soul oh my from my body oh. in disgust at the oh. opponent's one sideboard copy of Declaration in Stone. Spoiler alert, folks. Oh, that makes it even better. I did, I did not win that game. That's all one-off uh. Declaration in Stone. <laughs> so, it's all points there going to PV and Emma. Unfortunately, no quad Lano Elves for us this time, Zams. So no points there, I'm afraid. Uh, end of round two there. Um, <laughs> let's take a look at how these points are shaking out at the end of round number two. Okay. I'm, again, praying these are currently up to date. And if they are, this is real close at this point in time. Currently in third place, Emma, falling ever so slightly behind at 700 points at this moment in time. Second place, 800 points, just a 100 point gap. Very, very easy to catch. Zabacus sitting in second place. PV holding on to his lead by just a mere <laughs> 50 points at this point. So very, very close, making our way into round number three with everything still to play for. Uh, at this point in time, folks, we're going to take a real quick um, comfort break, just to make sure that everyone is okay. No one needs to use the bathroom or anything like that. So I'm going to pop you onto a small be right back screen for approximately two minutes, just to make sure that all of our players are okay. And we'll see you in just a second. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome on back, folks. Thank you very much for giving us a moment just to make sure that everyone is staying above and afloat. We're going to be carrying on with tonight's final round, round number three, with everything still to play for. We're calling this one Unruly Mob, and you may wonder why that is. It's because you, Twitch chat, this is all your fault. Uh, ahead of time in this particular in this particular round, uh, the Magic community was polled to the best of my ability. I've been sending out surveys and questionnaires and stuff. Oh. <laughs> I apparently didn't turn off a sub notification. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you for the resub. It's, it's a pilot. It's, it's a pilot. It's I'm, 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 I'm a professional and I am very smart. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm so smart. So we, we sent out a, a questionnaire ahead of time to as many players as we can, which is what we'll be doing for the foreseeable future until there is an alternative in place. Just trying to garner the opinions of the magic community and figure out what's most popular, what the most people think. Uh, and just, just how all things go all around. And we're going to be looking for a selection of questions, and we're going to be looking for all players to do their best to find the six most popular answers. So you'll see that we have six answers that received the most positive responses uh, when the survey went out in the first place, each of them worth mostly the same amount of points. Anything from two through to six, if you manage to score it, will indeed reveal and give you 100 points. If you manage to, however, pick the most popular answer, the, the uh, thing that was polled the most among the community, you will score yourselves 300 points instead. Uh, these questions will be universal. We're going to be starting with the lowest scoring player and making our way through. So we'll be going in the order of the first round, which is Emma, Zabricus, and PV in this particular case. Uh, each player will go in turn take a guess at the board and the prompt. If you get it correct, you'll score your points. If you are incorrect, you'll be frozen out for the rest of the question. The question will continue until we either have all three players frozen out or until all six answers have been revealed. Does that make sense to everybody? Perfect. Yes. Good, very much looking forward to it. So let's take a look at this first prompt from the survey. We're looking for the most powerful creature with the stats of 1-1. One, one. Oh, so, Jesus Christ. What do you think the most powerful creature with oh, a 1 God. power, 1 toughness stat line is? Ugh. Good. Uh, mine's gone blank. <laughs> Every, every, no every creature in magic disappears from Emma's mind simultaneously. Yeah, I, don't, I don't actually play magic. I'm just a bystander. I just like appeared. <laughs> I just stumbled on. Um, oh, geez. Um, put me on the spot here. Um, that is how the show works. I'm sorry about that. I mean, you're doing your, sh you're doing your job as a, as a quiz show host to put people on the spot. That's what you're meant to do. Um, oh, God. Um, I'm now, now I'm holding everyone up. Uh, you're yeah, okay. Um, don't panic. Oh, um... Seriously, my mind has got black. Every single 1-1 one, one creature of all time just gone. Apparently, I just don't play X-1s ever. Like, 1-1s one, in, any, in any format, ever. Um, we'll go, um, say, Lanawar Elves. We're going to go with Lanawar Elves. Is Lanawar Elves on the board? Would you look at that? Oh, okay. It is oh, indeed it on the board. No, it, it took a second, <laughs> but it is the most popular answer among the magic community. Um, I guess that's the case when people have been playing in, in recent years and have experienced historic as of late. Uh, the full 300 points there up top for the most popular answer going to Lanawa Elves for Emma. That. Very, very well done. <laughs> Zabs, you're up next. Find a 1-1 one, one <sighs> creature for me. Uh only because I absolutely despise this card, I mean, I hope, because it's recent, I hope it's on here. The uh, Thieving Guild Enforcer, I think is what it's called. Thieves Guild Enforcer, the Rogue One Drop. Yeah, that yeah. one. No worries. Let's take a look and see if Thieves Guild Enforcer is on the board. I'm afraid that's a big fat no, Zabs. No, no Thieves Guild Enforcer in the most powerful creatures this time around. Meaning we lose Zabs for the rest of this question. PV, what are you thinking? Most powerful 1-1s of all time. I have a generic question first. Absolutely. Uh, is the audience mostly British? Or the, the community mostly British or international? Uh, according to my Twitch figures, the majority of my viewer base is American. Uh, and it was yeah. shared as far wide as I possibly could get it. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go with Mother of Runes. 
We're going with Mother Ooh. of Runes. Does Mother of Runes appear on the board this time around? It does. Mother of Runes appearing in slot number three in terms of popularity for most powerful 1-1 one -one creatures of all time. 100 points, making its way over to PV. We go back to Emma. Have you remembered no, any other 1-1 one -one one creatures? One. <laughs> I love how the chat's going Slippery Bogle, which I, I appreciate, but I don't think that's correct, as much as I want it to be. Um... So I'm going to go with the elves thing again. I'm going to say Elvish Mystic. I know it's a bit. I know it's more recent than Nano Elves. <laughs> it's still a powerful one one. So I'm going to go Elvish keep, Mystic. Keep firing on the mana dog. Seems like a solid plan. He's going to jam all the elves. <laughs> I mean, elves are good, right? <laughs> Come on. Let's take a look and see if Elvish it's Mystic look terrible when it's wrong. Is on the board. Know. Let's take a look. Oh, unfortunately me, not, Emma. Me, no luck. Me, Elvish Mystic <laughs> not making an appearance on the top six answers so we lose emma only pv remaining the board is all yours if you can remember let's take a look and see all right so, so my act oh we've lost your audio sure answer for what the Sorry. most powerful woman creature is i don't know if anyone's gonna say that all right do you have me now yeah you're back no worries just lost you for a second <laughs> sorry about that uh, so my actual answer for what is the the best woman creature i don't know if anyone's gonna say that but i um Hermit Druid or a Druid Hermit? I don't know what it's called in English. Uh, Her Hermit Druid is the one. Uh, it's a good answer, but is it a correct one? Let's take a look at the board. It is. Ever so slightly just about Hermit Druid sneaking in in sixth place as the sixth most popular answer of most powerful creatures. Hey. With the stats of 1-1, one, one, makes its way onto the board in sixth. Another 100 points for PV. The board is still yours. <coughs> So I have three goblins now that I want to guess, but I don't know which <laughs> yeah, one we're likely to I was be thinking goblins as well, but again, my mind went back. I'm going to go with Goblin Recruiter. We're going to go with Goblin Recruiter. <laughs> Is there a Goblin Recruiter on the board? Let's take a look. <laughs> Unfortunately not. That is where that run is going to end. No luck on Goblin Recruiter, but a good run for question one, none the least. So no more points for anyone in this particular case. Let's take a look at the answers that no players got in this case. Number two was Delver of Secrets. Delver of Secrets coming in oh, yeah. as the second most popular answer. That is the most one. powerful 1-1. One, one. It's not really a 1-1, one, one, so it is easy to forget. Uh, fourth most popular answer being Edgewall Innkeeper <laughs> currently course, coming up on the board. Of course, there are cards on here, uh, of is, course. Is a, 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 you know, a, a recent <laughs> favourite of many people, as you can imagine. Uh, and fifth, the other answer that no one managed to pick up was Bomat Courier. Bomat Courier being oh, the fifth most popular answer on the survey of most powerful 1-1s one of all time. Good stuff. Three out of six. Let's see if we can do slightly better on question number two. Let's take a look. So at least I was drawing dead with all the goblins. You were indeed oh, drawing goblin dead lackey, with right? all the goblins. Oh. Don't but I, I? I also would have liked to have seen Goblin Lackey personally. All right, we got a real popularity question for round number two. We're looking for the most popular Ravnica Ooh. guild. Ooh. Most popular, popular Ravnica guilds. Again, we're not looking for the correct answer. We all know what the correct best guild is, but we're looking for for the most it's popular the one. Obviously, obviously, of course. Uh, Emma, of course, at the bottom <laughs> going into this round. Um, okay. So it's probably going to be a blue one, because people like playing blue. Um, hmm. I'm going to go Is It. We're going with Is It. Uh, good question. Yeah, is, is It on the board? Haha, <laughs> I'm, I'm here <laughs> all week <laughs> and I'm very, very sorry. And it is Sunday, so you don't have a lot of time left. That's true. Let's take a look and see if we have Is It. Emma, crushing it. Oh crushing it with the catching up so far. Is it indeed the most popular guild within the players polled for this community? Is it? It is. Spoiler alert. Zabs, what are you thinking? Popular Ramnica guilds. If this isn't on the board, I'm rioting. Uh, Rakdos. <laughs> We're going with Rakdos. Did Rakdos make the top six Ravnica guilds? Let's take a look. Oh god, would you believe it? No! No, it did not! Rakdos, not in the top six okay, guilds. Okay, whoever polled. you pulled, they are wrong. They I'm are wrong. Um, well, let me take a small moment. Regular viewers, I'm afraid you're all wrong. I don't make the rules. 
that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll uh, we'll lose lose Zabs for the rest of the round. I'm afraid. PV, what are you thinking? I'm gonna go with Simic. We're going with Simic. Is Simic on the board? I'm afraid not. There is no Simic in the top six gills poll in this particular case. 2019 just made people hate what Simic. Did, Apparently. Who did I who did, who did I poll? Everyone I could get the questionnaire to. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally every person to answer That's that question. Really surprising. I'm I'm I'm, yeah. I'm afraid Uro Titan of Nature's left Raf made left a really bad taste in a few people's mouths and therefore Simic okay. Simic less popular than before. Emma, you uh you Jesus. have the chance to run uh, so at the board. Too wrong. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna rattle these off, I guess, because I would have had Simic in here, but apparently no. So we'll go Golgari, because people like playing that in Commander. We're going with Golgari. Does Golgari... Uh, the, very, uh, the probability that I've got this right. But does Golgari it, appear on really bad. the board? Let's take a look. It does. Golgari in third yeah. place there in terms of popularity contest um, with Green Black. I guess uh, Azorius as well. That might be... That could be an incorrect one, actually, but we'll go Azorius anyway. Um, We're going with Azorius. Does Azorius appear on the board? It does. Azorius in fourth spot in terms of... Uh, uh, so it is it Golgari, we've had Simic, we've had Rakdos, so... I'm probably not going to say Selesnia as much as it pains me, because Selesnia is great, but it's always like the mo at least one of the least popular ones, and this is where it's going to look really, really bad on me. So we are going to go with... We're going with Selesnia? Uh, Demir. Go with Demir. We're going with Demir. Okay. Yes. Let's take a look. Is Demir on the board? Just laughing in the chat. That's someone called in Azorius Hall Monitor. Dad. It is. Demir <laughs> on the board in fifth place. Emma, still uh, going okay. with this particular... No, uh, we'll, go, we'll, go, we'll go Gruul. We're going with Gruul. Gruul available next. Not big on Gruul myself. But is we'll Gruul, Gruul on the board? We're still going. Gruul in sixth. <laughs> Sixth yeah. place so, in this particular oh, spot. Um, my brain's just gone. Uh, then we'll go Orzov. We're going with Orzov. I don't think it's Forrest. We're going I don't with think it's Forrest or Selesi. I think Orzov okay. is probably more popular. We're going Orzov. with Orzov to have a full clear on the board <laughs> from Emma for this round. Let's take a look and see if Orzov makes an appearance. If it's Forrest, I'm so surprised. I am afraid okay, not. not. Okay. We are finally, finally out of correct okay. answers for Emma taking a run at the board. <laughs> I, you know, is, it, is it actually Slesnia? When I planned, it is Slesnia. I'm going to look like a massive idiot. When I planned this question, I did not expect two players to go out before getting a correct answer. Uh, so that was a, a little more of a landslide than I thought. Um, let's take a look at answer number two that no one managed to get. It is Selesnia. Yeah. Selesnia oh, coming yeah. in as the second <laughs> second most popular guild in this particular case. Uh, almost, Emma, but no dice. Good stuff, good stuff. We're on to question... I let you down, poor Selesnia. Number three. <laughs> no, question number three of five. Let's take a look at the prompt for this one. Oh, boy. Uh, most powerful uh, card printed in Throne of Eldraine. We are looking oh, for what the community believes to be the most popular uh, and most powerful card in Throne of Eldraine. Emma, I'll leave it up to you. Obviously, the rules say <laughs> that um, you should be yeah. going first here, but you did kind of destroy that last that That's last fair. question. Would That's you fair. would you uh, would I, you like to I, reverse this at all or? I'll reverse this for the for the sport for the for the sake of the for the cup quiz. Yeah, I'll be bigger sport for, yeah, for being sporting and and and, uh, and, and yeah, not course. just running away with the entire board again. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go in the. I, win, I want it to be a challenge. So. Oh, oh, big words, big words from a uh, big contestant. <laughs> All right, we'll go in reverse for this question. Then, in which case, we'll start with PV and make our way back up to Emma. PV, what do you think? Most powerful cards printed in Throne of Eldraine. I'm gonna go with Oko. To, to the surprise that. of absolutely zero people <laughs> in this particular case, is Oko on the board? 
Three hundred points, PB. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your uh, your very Thank easy. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I, I, given this question this was next, a, I thought it might be this fair a to. Card that's correct. At least it's a, a Simic card that's correct compared to the last. <laughs> yeah, of course. We get a we get a Simic card on the board. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, Zabs, you get second guess at the board. Most powerful cards in Throne of Eldraine. What do you think? Okay. Again, if this. This is not on the board. I question the 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 um, just the people that you pulled. Uh, Embercleave. We're looking for Embercleave. Does Embercleave make its way onto the board as most powerful cards in the set? It does. Second position, oh, in good. fact. Oh, um, <laughs> second second most powerful card in a lot of people's minds. Obviously, many people believe in the cleave and have been on the wrong end of a rather large sword, and it makes its way into second place. Emma, what do you think? Most popular and powerful cards. From Throne of Eldraine. So my hidden seventh answer is going to be the whole set, but I don't think that's going to get me any points. <laughs> I'm afraid no. So uh... I'll just go once upon a time, which I forgot was like banned in every format until the other day. So indeed, we're going with once upon a time. Does once upon a time make its way onto the board? It does, but only in fifth That's place. It. Fifth place, once That's upon surprising. a time there. That's really surprising. As, uh, I think most people may have just forgotten it existed, if I'm being completely honest. To be fair, I did. Uh, and <laughs> I like, yeah. you know, Of course, most people may have also just been like, oh yeah, Oko. And then if they vote for Oko, they, they can't have voted for once upon a time. So that mm. does, does definitely add up as well. Uh, back to you, PV. What do you think? I'm going to go with Fires of Invention. We're going with Ooh, Fires okay, of Invention. Is Fires of Invention on the board for this one? Oh, we're losing Zabs' camera. We might have to take a look uh -oh. at that in just a second. Oh. I'm afraid not, PB, no. <laughs> Fires of Invention, um, currently, I'm afraid, uh, not on the board. It is it's not banned. in the top six answers. Wow. We're back. We have a Zabs again. Wow. Zabs, Zabs got eaten by a ghost very happened. briefly, but we, we have... We that have, don't happen. That was weird. It's okay. Technological you know. problems happen. Uh, don't good. worry about it too much. But unfortunately, no, no, uh, no fires on the board for your PV. So frozen out for the rest of this question. Zabs, what do you think? Uh, uh, we're gonna go with Bone Crusher Giant. We're going with Bone Crusher Giant. Seems like a very fair guess as one of the better adventures that was printed in the set is Bone Crusher Giant on the board. Let's take a look. <laughs> Afraid not. No Bone oh, Crusher Giant gosh. in the most six powerful cards in oh, Throne of Eldraine. Um, we see most people that are scared of Bone Crusher may also have been scared of Oko. So uh, no Bone Fair. Crusher makes the cut. Emma, you get to take another shot at running the board. I'm going to go with a card that constantly has its text changing. So every time I read it, it does something different. And I always get really confused with it. And that's Questing Beast. Questing Beast. We're going with Questing Beast from Emma in terms of most powerful mm. cards in Eldraine. Let's take a look and see if it is on the board. <laughs> Afraid not. No, no, okay. no Questing Beast making the cut in the top six most powerful cards. Let's take a look at the things that did make the cut that may have been forgotten by our players. In position <laughs> number three, we had... Edge wall innkeeper, oh, everyone's really everyone's favourite, yeah. everyone's favourite one one of course on the minds of many from a previous question, likely to make the cut. Uh, answer number four, we've got the Great Henge. The Great Henge, obviously another yeah, one that sees a lot of play in standard and fresh in the minds of many many players. And number six, Mystic Sanctuary, a card that is often oh, forgotten yeah, to be in the set by many as well, yeah. and of course now banned <laughs> in the modern format, banned in pauper, and banned just about everywhere. Um, to the surprise of very few people. So very, very powerful land there in the form of Mystic Sanctuary. We move on to question number four out of five for this round. Let's take a look at the prompt. What card would you most like added to the historic format? So, really simple. Popularity contest oh again. Think of some fan favorite cards, cards that people are always ranting and raving about in the community, wishing they could play with on MTG Arena. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll go with, uh, with the, the regular Reverso Syndrome in this particular case. We'll, we'll start things off with PV this round. Do you want to start with Zabrikas, maybe? I can or... do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can freshen things up, as I say. Uh, we, we gotta... you start. This one is hard, so you can start. <laughs> I, I got I to work on how to sequence players in this game. Uh, pilots, pilots for a reason. Uh, Zabs, what are you thinking? What are your favorite cards, Zabs? 
I'm an arena zoomer, and so <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't sorry about know, that. Like any old cards that aren't already in historic that should be in historic. Um, so I'm honestly going with chat on uh, these. So chat, you know, just keep just keep saying cards, um, <laughs> and you know, whichever seems you know. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't even Jeez. know. This is hard. It's a broad question. Uh, actually, that's a decent one. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace the Mind Sculptor. I don't know. Uh, one that. of the oh, most no, no. infamous planeswalkers of all time. Uh, does it appear <laughs> on the board for people wanting it in historic? Let's take a look. Hmm. Afraid not, Zabs. Most people not fans of being uh, fate sealed. This is, uh, this is, uh, not <laughs> my question anyway. No, I, I'm I'm afraid they can't all be for you. Uh, I I try my best, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sadly, sadly, not every question can be equal. No luck there from Zabs. Who who wants to take a go next? Go on, I'll leave it open to the two of you. <laughs> PV, we'll go with PV. What do you think, PV? Uh, path to exile. We're going with. Path to Exile. Does Path to Exile appear on the most popular requests for Historic? Let's take a look. Surprisingly, no. Uh, one that I definitely thought would make an appearance on the board. Very much something I expected to be a popular answer, and apparently does not make the top six in this case. Emma, it's just you. So, can, can we score so any of these? So this is a trick one, because I'm thinking about the cards that are banned in Historic from like Jumpstart and Mystical Archive stuff. Interesting. I, I don't know if that will count towards the list, if we're accounting for the ban list in this. Um, so I'm just gonna go with Lightning Bolt. We're going with Lightning Bolt. Does Lightning Bolt make an appearance on the list? It does. It is oh, in man, fact the uh, the most popular <laughs> requested is answer. Your round. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid, of course, many people not particularly happy about the fact that Bolt was not legal uh, in the Mystical Archive, and therefore pretty pretty likely to be a common answer on this question. I think uh, Bolt up there scoring well, the maximum number of points. What, now I need to think what else is banned that people want on banned. Um, we will go with uh, counter spell. We're going with counter spell. It, uh, it's, yeah, it is not legal in historic. That is correct. I, uh, I do not pay attention to historic, so this is just some some good guesswork so far. Let's take a look. <laughs> it is yes, okay. counter spell oh, okay. sneaking sneaking its way onto the bottom of the board in sixth position there. Um... Oh, I need to think out, because Path to Exile is a really good one. That would have been one I, as well. I very much, banded, very much expected Path to be on this list. And uh, for yeah. those who are wondering, um, it finished in eighth place. And uh, did not quite make the cut. I'm trying to remember what else is banned. Swords to Plowshares, I think, is banned. Let's Maybe? take a look and see if we'll Swords... Go with swords. We'll yeah. go with swords. swords to Plowshares it is. Let's take a look and see if it's on the board or not. Afraid not. No swords to plowshares making the cut on the top six most requested cards for Historic. Now, fully aware this was a difficult question. Hopefully, at the very least, some of these answers are interesting or possibly concerning, depending on how you prefer to enjoy playing Magic. Let's take a look at uh, people's popular choices in fifth place. Liliana of the Veil making the cut as the fifth most requested card for Historic. Uh, very, very powerful, iconic Planeswalker. In fourth place... Sensei's Divining really? Top, which God, you guys are boring. Arena players, <laughs> arena players like to complain about Cat Oven. Can you imagine the amount of complaints Ugh. we would get if you had to spin? If you had to spin a top, stasis. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. <laughs> Armageddon number two. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's what we would be expecting. Let's take a look at number three. Ether Vial. Ether Vial being the third, that one I can get the third most requested Ether card Vial. for Historic. Uh, obviously a very popular one for the creature deck fanatics out there. And number two, possibly the most surprising answer on the board. Prized Amalgam coming in as one of the most popular answers for Historic. Clearly we have some dredge fanatics or people that enjoy some uh, some graveyard shenanigans taking the poll or you know very... Very lonely group of friends that may have picked the same answer. One or, one or the other, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we move on to 
the fifth and final question for this round. Now, this will work exactly the same as before, except there is a secret question number seven tucked away at the bottom of this round. It is worth a whopping 500 points should you manage to find the answer. Now, what's behind that door? Well, it is in fact an answer that exactly one person gave to the survey. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for the six most popular answers and for bonus points if you want to try and catch up and score yourself the big bucks, one hidden correct answer that only one person gave. Let's take a look at the prompt for this fifth and final question. When I say the name Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, what card do you think of first? So we'll freshen things up. We'll go in the middle. We'll let Zabs chase down uh, first in this one, and then we'll take it from there. When I say Ikoria, Layer of Behemoths, <coughs> what card do you think of first? Do I need to give, like, the proper name of the card? No, or, as, like... long as, as long as we can tell what card you're talking about. Uh, it's, it's not a problem. Uh... Uh, I mean, the first thing that comes to my head is Gem Razor, but that's probably wrong. We're going. Are we going with Gem Razor? Just confirming we're going with Gem Razor, yeah? Yes. No yes. worries. I lost your audio for just a second. So double checking. Oh, sorry. It's all good. Just making sure for, for, you know, clarity and everything. Let's take a look and see if Gem Razor is on the board. Oh, well, apparently it disappeared first, but hopefully it will appear in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Gem Razor coming in in fifth as the fifth most popular answer first thought of uh, in the case of Ikoria. Of course, some lovely art on the Godzilla version of that card. PV, would you like to go next? <sighs> uh, <laughs> I have a good guess for what the 500 is, but, you know, it's so easy to miss on that. I'm going to go with Luca. We're going with Luca, the Copper Coat Outcast. Does they make an appearance on the board? Let's take a look. They do. They are in second place in this particular case. Luca, Copper Coat Outcast, of course, all over the packaging and a brand new Planeswalker in this set. So very fresh in the minds of many new players, I'm sure. Emma, what are you thinking? What comes to mind with Ikoria? I, the Cat Nightmare herself, Lurus of the Dream Den. Lurus, the first creature coming to mind for Emma. Let's take a look and see if Lurus is on the board. It is. It was, in fact, the most popular yeah. answer to this question. Lurus the Dream, then, of course, banned in, banned in Vintage, unbanned again, and sees play in every other format known to man. Very, very powerful companion indeed. Uh, Zabs, we're, we're, uh, with, we're, we're with, uh, I can't speak, words are hard. Zabs, we're with, uh, we're with you. We're going to go with the Sky Noodle, Yorion. We're going with Yorion, Sky Nomad, the big Sky Noodle. Do they make an appearance on the board? They do. They are in third place, Yorion, Sky Nomad, uh, a favorite of many and a nemesis of many more. PV, <laughs> three spots remaining. Right. I'm going to go with the Death Corona card. We're going with the Death Corona Ooh. card. Space Godzilla, Death Corona. Let's take a look and see if it appears on the board or not. <laughs> Afraid not, oh. PV. No luck there. But take... it was a really good 500 answer. It was indeed <laughs> a very good 500 answer. Uh, I hate to admit it, but from the top of my head, two people submitted Space Godzilla, Death Corona as an answer, which oh, means I couldn't pick it to be in that slot, unfortunately. So no luck. No luck on 500 points and we lose PV for this question. Emma, what are you thinking are the most popular I cards from Ikoria? I am going to go with Winota, Joiner of Forces. We're going with Winota, Joiner of Forces. Does it appear on the board for most thought of cards from Ikoria? Let's take a look. Oh that no! Me. Afraid not. Because they did a treachery. Indeed. Apparently everyone just blanked her. That's standard. But we, okay, that's we fine. tried our best to erase <laughs> that from our memory because no, thank you. Um, no luck with Winoa Rider on the board. Unfortunately, one way or the other leaves us with exactly a Zabs remaining. You can run at the board as much um, as you I'm want. Just, uh, I'm debating I if I continue going is. with companions or go with mutate creatures. Like ugh. 
Very, very good question. Oh, so many options. I, I need to get that 500 points. I need to, I need to catch up. Um, let's go with Poliwag Symbiote. Interesting choice. Poliwag Symbiote. The, uh, the two-mana creature to mutate things onto. Let's see oh, yeah. if it's on the board. Probably not. <laughs> Afraid not. No dice on Poliwag Symbiote. Not a popular enough answer oh, in this Sharknado. case. Sharknado. Wasn't that one in the Aquaria one? Sharknado yeah, would have been a decent shout. Uh, oh, yeah. There that is a, a, a number of playable cards in that set. Let's see what we missed right. and what came to mind in position number four. We have triomes, just the triomes. Oh, that's as... a trick question. Yeah, indeed, indeed. <laughs> we have triomes, the land cycle coming to mind as the fourth most popular answer. Uh, in sixth place, we have Emergent Ultimatum, oh, yeah. obviously I would have not uh, got that one. <laughs> a powerhouse, a powerhouse in current standard and yeah. and historic. And our secret hidden answer, with only one person submitting this, was Zenith Flare. Zenith Flare I being the, the cycling, as well. the cycling That's payoff tucked yeah. away <laughs> behind that five hundred point box. Unfortunately, no luck. Indeed, good good job. Good job indeed. Thought it'd be nice to, to pay off the cycling payoff as our hidden answer. Let's uh, let's hop on over to the scoreboard and uh, hopefully see who has won our first episode. Let's take a look. Wow, that is a crushing swing towards the end there. What a absolutely <laughs> a <bit> overwhelming <laughs> finish oh. in terms of Emma. Third place, Flawless unfortunately, 1,100 points. <laughs> Zab's finishing there in third. PV, very well done, 1,450. Woo! Unfortunately, uh, poor choice of Ravnica Guild knocking you out at the, uh, at the exact wrong time. <laughs> and of course, Emma running hot there on the board at the end, scoring all kinds of points yeah, in round number out. three coming out as our winner for today. Let's pop on over to our introductions and we'll give Emma her little winning jingle because everyone has one of those. My what now? Sorry, you just cut out ever so slightly. Uh, you, you, really you, have a, you have a winning winning jingle. You get a nice gold medal on your um, uh, on your photo frame and, and oh, some, really? some music and stuff. I, I, should, I, should, I should get a hat or something, but yeah. I, I will post I'll you. I, 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 will, I will post you a hat. Don't panic. It'll be completely oh, yes. fine. Um, more hats. Congratulations, Emma. Uh, remind us who are we going to be making a charitable donation towards uh, due to your victory? Um, it will be to Trans Lifeline. Um, they're a really, really good charity. Um, done a lot for them over the years. Um, but yeah, check them out, translifeline.org. They do a lot of good stuff for um, transgender groups and supporting them in every way possible. A fantastic cause and more than happy to help. Well, folks, uh, thank you very, very much for joining us for our first live episode of Magic the Quizzing. I'd appreciate your feedback. By all means, send me a message. You can find me everywhere at Howling Minds to let me know what you thought and uh, should we carry on with this concept and keep the show going. Uh, I just want to give the guys who have joined us today uh, the chance to plug themselves as well. Feel free to follow the channel and consider subscribing and supporting if you are uh, into what's going on here. Uh, Emma, where can the folks in chat find you if they want to find you? Um, so you can find me on Twitter at mzyne, so that's e triple -M -Z -Y -N -E. I do stream from once in a while as well. Um, and you can find my content over at MTG Rocks, Polygon, and at Dicebreaker. Perfect. Zabs, where can the lovely chat find you? Uh, I'm on all the social medias at Zabricus. Uh, I do stream weekend evenings, twitch.tv uh, slash Zabricus, Z-A-B-R-A-C-U-S. Sounds perfect. And PP, of course, where can, where can your admiring <laughs> fans find you? I'm on Twitter, uh, PVDDR, and also on YouTube, PVDDR, and I write every week for StarCityGames.com, so Perfect easy to stuff. find as well. Make sure you check out all of our lovely contestants and creators on their respective platforms. Guys, thank you so much for coming to play. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you, everyone, coming to watch the show and enjoy themselves as well. You take care of yourselves, and hopefully I'll see everyone again very soon. But from now, it's goodbye from everyone here. Wave for me. Bye. Oh.